Hey, good morning, y'all. Josh, a severe weather happy weekend to you. Uh, this will be my only video this weekend, but we've got a very active weather pattern coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, pretty common for late spring, I would say. You know, we got stuck with some winter weather, some miserable weather in the Great Lakes and Northeast. Now we're trending in the direction of what you would expect in the second half of May and June. And that is going to be complex after complex of thunderstorms, a heavy rain threat, severe weather threat for many, but not an easy forecast. So nothing I'm going to show you here is completely set in stone. And you're going to see why. Uh, and this is, this is the common theme as we head into summer. Uh, a lot of storm complexes, models guessing at the timing of every single one of those complexes, Yet the forecast on your app is most likely not going to work out in many places, especially when you start looking out beyond a couple of days. And if you saw my community post yesterday, you're going to see that uh, a two day forecast in the southeast just kind of completely got uh, destroyed here, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, here in the southeast today, we're actually looking at a pretty nice day, uh, at least in the Carolinas. And I know a few days ago, it looked like it was going to be a washout. So a lot of that has to do with storm complexes and where they're tracking and how they're timed. Now you're probably saying to yourself, okay, so this guy's putting out a video talking about future weather and he's just telling you that everything he's gonna show you is total garbage. That's not completely true. I'm just telling you that the certainty level is not as high as you would like to see because we're in a pattern where a lot of things are more on a what we call a meso scale, kind of a medium range scale, rather than a larger uh, synoptic scale. So anyway, I'm going to get off of that and I'm going to show you some graphics here. And if you have any questions, please post those to the comments page. Happy to answer those for you. Now, let's try to keep it respectful. I, I want to I want to obviously uh, answer your questions. And um, I know there can be frustration with those, but let's, uh, you know, tr follow the golden rule here if we can. Uh, I only say that because I've got a good friend who um, very much does that every day. Mitch West does Mitch West weather, and uh, he's come under a few attacks by some folks that I think are just a little bit jealous, to be honest with you. Uh, so anyway, here is a look at the upcoming storm uh, tracks, and this is from the NAM model. And you guys can see we're going to have multiple complexes of storms, all of them kind of moving pretty quickly off to the east and southeast. Uh, we had storms last night in the plains. That has been pretty common this time of the year. We, we're going to see that again today, kind of up and over the ridge. But as you can see here, the models are trying to guess at multiple complexes of storms. These are kind of mesoscale convective systems, MCSs, uh, not derecho. I'm going to talk about derecho in a minute. Uh, I know that sounds like a scary word because a lot of us have been through some of those. In fact, I spent, I spent a week up in Wisconsin in July a few years back, and I got hit with two of them in less than 24 hours. And it was very intense. That was up in Stevens Point. Uh, so we're not we're not talking of that magnitude at this point, but we are looking at what's going to be active weather, what's going to lead to heavy amounts of rain, lots of lightning strikes. Those obviously can be very dangerous. It's the weekend. People want to get outside. Lightning and, and, and outdoor activities obviously do not mix. And I just want you guys to be prepared for what's to come here. So I'm going to do my very best. Uh, here's a look at the upper level pattern and the big omega block um, that kind of kept things trapped on the west coast and the east coast has now started to shift and we have what we call a little bit more of a progressive pattern you can see kind of the jet stream shaping up here where we've got a, a faster flow out of the southwest and that's going to push storm tracks up and over this ridge and some of these storms are going to get caught underneath the ridge and produce heavy rain that's what we're seeing in louisiana and into mississippi this morning and uh, we'll likely see off and on over the upcoming week. Uh, the Northeast, uh, enjoy this while you can. This is a nice dry flow out of the North. Uh, no moisture source coming from this. It's a little cool out there, sure. Even here in Raleigh, North Carolina, I was 48 this morning, a little cooler than maybe I expected, but that certainly beats 50s in rain all day. So we will take that every day. Uh, but you'll see this ridge start to gradually shift east and southeastward into the southeast. And that's gonna warm temperatures up next week. It's also going to increase our chances for storms. Uh, the West, we are stuck in a pretty uh, dreary pattern here. In uh, Northern Cal, we're dealing with mountain snow, just some really lousy weather across the pack Northwest here, but that is going to shift in the coming days. Uh, you can see we had three complexes of storms yesterday, especially last night, but this was during the afternoon in Mississippi. And then we had severe weather across Central Texas, avoiding the Metroplex. And then it was really nasty across far northeastern Colorado and central and western Nebraska last night. And these are just mesoscale convective systems. Uh, they don't produce big tornado outbreaks like we saw back in the late winter and spring. They do, though, however, produce major amounts of hail and certainly intense wind. And there was even a tornado in southwestern Wyoming. 
Now, uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, try to zoom in and out. Now, right now, uh, the map is pretty quiet. We do have obviously some winter weather to talk about in the mountains of California, some flooding as snow melts in the Northwest, as well as uh, in the Lake Superior region. And fog is mostly burned off now. We do have fire conditions continuing in the drought region here as all the storms seem to kind of escape off to your north and east. Uh, but today we are going to see an increase in more severe weather, especially towards the late day hours in Missouri, Illinois, uh, Iowa, uh, avoiding you mostly in Peoria, mainly off to your south and west, but St. Louis is in this slight risk. And then a bigger risk uh, over Texas and Oklahoma, we now have an enhanced risk. That has been an upgrade in today's forecast. And uh, in the Texas region, we do have um, the potential to see six to eight million folks that could have some severe weather here later today into tonight. Uh, here is a kind of a, a zoomed in view from the Storm Prediction Center. You can see the enhanced risk stays north and west of Fort Worth. Uh, we're looking at places like Wichita Falls. We're looking at Abilene, uh, Cisco up to about Jacksboro and even sneaking into southern Oklahoma. Uh, up to about Ardmore. Um, this does stay south of you in Oklahoma City as far as the greater chance for severe weather, but you are in a marginal risk in uh, Oklahoma City and Tulsa for that matter, right up 44. And that means, you know, the threat for hail certainly is still there. Uh, if you look here a little bit closer, you'll see that this is not expected to be a big tornado outbreak, but mainly a hail event. Uh, windshields in North Texas this time of the year take a beating. I watched the Storm Chaser videos. Not something I personally encourage. I'm not going to go on the air and say, um, let's go out and chase storms. Um, I'm actually here to try and talk about how to be safe, but people do it. I appreciate what they do. A lot of them are experienced. They provide us with valuable data, some really neat videos. And then when the storm moves past, um, they're there to help out in the event of search and rescue. So again, nothing negative towards them, just not something I personally encourage or would do. I've done it when I was younger, but uh, I've seen some nasty storms, and uh, obviously that's the case at night as the sun goes down here north and west of Fort Worth. So a big threat for hail. We do have a, a wind uh, threat as well for severe wind, and uh, we could see over 50 storm reports, maybe even over 100 here uh, in the 24-hour stretch ending at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, not going to ignore you guys in the Mississippi Valley. Um, kind of twofold here. We see lots of rain and severe weather. Uh, I am mindful that we've had flooding in the Davenport area and other parts of Iowa and Illinois, and that's freshwater flooding, not from rain falling, but from snow melt from all the snow upstream in Minnesota and Michigan over the winter. A lot of us got skipped on winter, but those folks got hammered, and all that snow has to go somewhere. And when it melts, and this time of year it does, it goes straight down the Mississippi River and uh, right into an area that's going to have severe weather here later today. So the threat for hail and wind is up to about uh 15 percent uh including memphis missouri not memphis tennessee kirksville hannibal even into the st charles and st louis areas and just to the west of springfield illinois as well uh there is a two percent chance for tornadoes as well that actually goes a little farther west towards chillicothe and columbia and jefferson city and i think the threat for that's going to come kind of in two waves here later today and tonight now in the southeast this time of the year it is a massive pain in the butt trying to figure out storm tracks if you're in Louisiana and southwestern Mississippi, you already know this, but um, we do have a marginal risk here, and that does include a 2% chance for tornadoes and a 5% chance for some hail and strong winds, basically from uh, places like near Vicksburg and uh, Natchez, Mississippi, Alexandria, Bunky, Marksville, down through Baton Rouge, Lafayette, right, right on down the Atchafalaya uh, Basin here, all the way down to Morgan City, home in New Orleans even all the way down to the to the mouth of the Mississippi here around Boothville and Pilot Town into the Chandelier uh, Islands as well. Uh, as we get to tomorrow, we're looking at still a chance for um, some thunderstorms, but at this point, nothing more than an, uh, just a, a general risk of thunderstorms. And then as we get to uh, Monday, we are also looking at that general risk. By the way, I wanted to go back in time here. Um, we do have a threat for more severe weather tomorrow in the Omaha area to about St. Joe, Maryville into northeastern Kansas, staying just north of Topeka, and all the way back to Lincoln, Nebraska, we could see some big hail here for tomorrow. And then that threat for severe weather does finally shift out of Nebraska and down farther south into downstate Illinois, southwest Indiana, and getting into the Ozarks region around Rolla and just north of Cape Girardeau. And that is going to be on Monday. 
So we are not just looking at severe weather today, but we're looking at multiple waves that are going to produce a lot of rain for some of you folks. We're talking maybe five or more inches, and we're also looking at multiple waves of severe weather. So uh, we are well into the early summer pattern here of severe weather. We're not looking at major tornadoes, fortunately. I know we're going to have some tornadoes, and I've predicted an active year more than average, uh, but we're not looking at a repeat of what we saw back in March and early April. Um, back to Texas. Uh, sorry for jumping past you guys here, but the threat for severe weather does lessen some tomorrow. It's still there. Uh, we could see some hail and severe wind uh, in central Texas, right on through Oklahoma into southeastern Kansas. And that's the case again on Monday, but really I'm focused on later today. Could we see an upgrade to slight risk tomorrow? Certainly, but I think the ridge is building in. It's getting hotter. And with that warmer air aloft, we have somewhat of a cap that's going to make it harder to get storms to develop. But with all the storm fuel that's going to be there, regardless of that cap, if it tries to break, there certainly could be an intense storm or two here, even tomorrow into Monday, a classic kind of dry line setup here. So anyway, here is a look at the NAM forecasted satellite. This is from weatherbell.com. You guys can see blob after blob after blob, and it's just really ugly looking here. There's no... There's really no organization what we see, but we do see some of the same places getting hit over and over again, especially in Missouri and Illinois and Iowa. Uh, so uh, to try and predict where everything's going to end up here is is very much uh, challenging to me as somebody who's done this over 20 years and really to any severe weather expert. So really, we're going to have to take this on a day by day basis. But you can see as we get to this afternoon, storms blow up in West Central Texas around six o'clock. We also see stuff in Louisiana, Mississippi later today, and we see it downstate Illinois, and then again, Iowa and Missouri. And the pattern repeats itself. A lot of rain overnight tonight, potentially. You see these very cold storm uh, cloud tops here near St. Louis around 5 in the morning tomorrow. And then we get a break, it clears out, and we get hit again at night. So a lot of nocturnal storms. Flooding at night certainly is something I am very much um, an advocate for being prepared for. Um, I have a family member who unfortunately got caught in a flash flood a couple years ago. Somebody actually warned and just couldn't get out quickly enough. And um, they, they're okay, but it was a traumatic experience for all of us. So I very much advocate that you be safe in dealing with any kind of travel at night when we're dealing with heavy rainfall. And in some cases, some things are just unavoidable. And we just really have to, unfortunately, uh, just uh, go to the man upstairs and say, look, I really need you here. Uh, I really need you to come through for me. And uh, at that point, you know, obviously I pray for everybody's safety and I hope others do as well. I'll get to that at the end of this video. But over the weekend, we see starting to get cloudier here tomorrow across the Northeast, storm track getting more active across the Tennessee Valley into the Southeast. And it continues to get unsettled across the Ohio Valley, dropping South and East into Tennessee. And I think eventually in the Carolinas, we're gonna see an active storm track later Monday into Tuesday. This is delayed, but not denied. We, we looked at what was gonna be potentially a very wet weekend in the Southeast. That doesn't look to necessarily be the case, fortunately for us, but we could see storms later tomorrow in the uh, Appalachians, even onto the uh, foothills of Virginia. But you can see bigger rain over parts of Tennessee and Northern Alabama, and this could still change some. And then we get Georgia and the South Carolina late in the weekend and more storms diving southeastward here next week. So let's take a look at the GFS model here. You can see kind of where everything is generated, where it's going, and this is just not a simple forecast. You see storm complex after storm complex. One guarantee is that it's going to be crappy in the northwest and the upper midwest, uh, but that's really about it. I don't know why it's jumping like this. It's probably because I have 28 tabs open and half of them don't respond. Sounds like my brain. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is this is uh, this is active. We see the ridge kind of pokes up into Nebraska and Iowa north of it. That's where the storms are going to track right up and over the ridge. They're ridge runners and um, it's going to be cool and wet here in central Canada, unfortunately, um, but not snowing, fortunately. So a weekend without snow, finally, I think that's going to be the case moving forward. And then maybe more organized weather into the northeast, but really it's going to take another uh, seven, eight, nine days for that to occur. Here's a look at why. You can see this is the ridge building northeastward into the Ohio Valley here. You can see these lines start poking northeast, but then you see disturbances embedded within that flow, 40 to 50 knot kind of wind at 500 millibars, and that moves east and then southeastward. And we're going to have multiple waves here. You can kind of follow the pinks and purples southeastward. 
then a big storm late next week moving into the plains and then that is going to eventually stall and then push east and southeastward and when winds aloft do increase here but we see the trough moving through that's going to cool things down as well so we may see severe weather in the northeast by the middle of may but again uh, i just don't want to put a lot of faith in something just one operational model here 10 days out so this can change uh, as far as duratios go, we're starting to get to the time of the year where we have to watch for duratios. Um, typically, they occur across the central part of the country. That is really not a shocker. In the Northeast, we get them towards the middle of summer and maybe early uh, into August, uh, but those typically don't occur this early in the season. Early in the season, we start seeing them down in here. We saw one in Oklahoma here about a month ago, actually, I think at the end of uh, March, before the big tornado outbreak. Uh, but as we get into May, they start shifting into Missouri and Kansas and into the western parts of the uh, Tennessee Valley and Ohio Valley. Then as we get into June and July, I think this is the area we've got to be watching more likely. Uh, Duratio is defined as a fast moving storm complex that produces widespread wind damage over 60 miles per hour. I think in many cases you're going to see 70 to 80 or even more miles per hour because those storms accelerate. When you look back here at the uh, flow aloft, we don't see that kind of fast wind. We do see some severe threat, but we don't see winds aloft here that are over 80 knots that would push those kind of storms through. So it's a little early to be talking about the D word here. Uh, but what we are going to see, because those storms are not moving as quickly as they would in a derecho, is that we are going to see a bunch of rain here over the next couple of uh, days. Uh, we can see big areas of yellow, which are four inches plus here in the next week in the uh, upper Midwest and Plains, in the uh, Great Lakes region, in the Ohio and Tennessee Valley, in Texas, especially South Texas. And that rain certainly could be useful for some of you in deep South Texas, but it could be quite a bit here. And really into the East, the Northeast doesn't look super wet in the next week, but uh, in the Carolinas, in West Virginia, in Virginia, maybe Western Maryland, Southwest PA, there are threats for heavy rain. And this is just a global model, the European. It doesn't even show you smaller scale things that could occur here in, on a smaller scale. And those, those are where you look at those flash floods. So flash floods become most common here in May and right through September and early October. I do think that is gonna be something we've gotta watch for in here and here and here, and possibly even in the Carolinas as we get into later next week. Real quick, I'm gonna roll you through the weather here later today into tonight. Storm complex over Texas and Oklahoma. You also see Louisiana, Mississippi, a storm complex. This is through tonight. As we get to tomorrow, more storms firing farther west of Dallas and Ardmore, and then a break, and then more storms expected later Monday. In between, there could be some isolated activity as well, a little bit of scattered milk here. Here's a look at the HRRR. You can see things blowing up here west of Dallas and Weatherford. Abilene going to get hit, Wichita Falls uh, between 7 and 9 o'clock this evening, maybe even a little sooner, and then storms kind of weaken by the time they get into Dallas and Plano and Frisco here around midnight or so. And as we get into tomorrow, more storms pop up, but less organization over Texas. Farther east in Louisiana is going to get nasty this afternoon, really even late this morning uh, along I-10 and then heading southeast. More heavy storms moving through some places here could get over three or four inches of rain, some hail and some strong wind. We get a break and then we see more isolated activity later tomorrow as well. Uh, and then looking farther north, Nebraska got hammered hard. Now that shifts farther south and east into Missouri and Illinois. Here's our first complex tonight. We get a little break and then more storms tomorrow south of uh, Des Moines, south and east of Des Moines and Lincoln and Omaha mostly. But this could shift farther east. And then tomorrow night we get hit once again in Missouri, Kansas and Illinois. The pattern repeats itself on Monday farther south and east. Uh, here's a look uh, at Illinois. We have one storm complex moving through downstate later today, another storm complex moving through overnight. We also see storms in Indiana and Ohio. They weaken a little when they get to West Virginia tomorrow morning and southeast Kentucky. Uh, but then a wet day tomorrow across Tennessee, if this model is correct. Eventually that makes its way into North Carolina late tomorrow to tomorrow evening, maybe even upstate South Carolina. Here comes the next one a little farther north and east across Illinois later tomorrow night moving into Indiana and weakening some by Monday morning. But you guys can see about every 12 to 18 hours, another complex rolls through and a lot of rain is certainly possible here. Zooming in on Missouri, you guys can see uh, St. Louis could have some storms today, but then overnight into tomorrow, we get more rain, a break, and then we see more later tomorrow night, actually early Monday morning, around three or four in the morning. 
And while we don't see widespread severe weather, certainly that chance is there. There's going to be a lot of rain regardless for some folks. I would not be shocked if a foot of rain fell in one location over the next seven days somewhere in that region. Uh, looking at the southeast, it looked like it was going to be a really nasty day today, but because we're in between complexes and disturbances outside of Louisiana, Mississippi, ain't going to be a whole lot falling today. But tomorrow, uh, that does pick up over Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi later tomorrow afternoon, especially tomorrow night. And then things do fade when they hit the Carolinas overnight. But more storms are expected on Monday. You can see storms start to pop up around Brevard and around uh, Cashiers and those areas in North Carolina, even spreading towards Traveler's Rest and uh, the far northeastern tip of Georgia, Raven County there. Uh, finally, we're going to look farther north, and you're not completely out of the woods for storms, but we're just looking at scattered rain mostly. I don't think Michigan and Wisconsin see a lot of severe weather, uh, but we're going to get that snow to melt with this fresh rain. Uh, we do have to keep an eye on things, though, next week. Uh, here's a look at the northeast. A picture-perfect day today, I think, for most, except maybe a scattered shower, too, if you are traveling up to the presidential range or into parts of western Maine. Uh, but not a lot of rain expected. Tomorrow should be okay for most of New England. We do see some lighter rain moving through Ontario, western New York, and western PA. That will eventually sneak southeastward towards the I-95 corridor later tomorrow evening and late tomorrow night. But we do escape the majority of the weekend without rain. That is not um, that is not something I just misspoke. You're like, oh gosh, I'm so used to the rain. It's like, whoa, what's going on? But seriously, we're not going to see a lot this weekend. It's going to be a pretty decent weekend. It may get cloudier tomorrow, but really a good weekend to get outside and do some activities here in the Northeast, finally. Later tomorrow night, that does change, and then this rolls through Monday morning. Should have a decent start to Monday, except for some scattered showers across Maine. Finally, i got to speed things up here. I apologize. But the west stays kind of ugly for the next couple of days. Then it starts warming back up around midweek. And next weekend could be pretty hot on the west coast. 90s and triple digits in Arizona and Southern Cal. Even some 90s in the interior of the northwest and 80s for the I-5 corridor by the 15th. In the plains, it's hot. We had a record high in Dallas of 96 yesterday. More cloud cover is going to hold temps down just a bit. But still cranking up the AC all weekend long here across the southern plains. Uh, it'll stay pretty toasty next week, but notice it does cool down some uh, by Wednesday and Thursday of next week before starting to warm back up. But next weekend is not as hot in the Southern Plains. The reason why is we've got a storm system moving in. It's going to feed us more clouds, more rain, more moisture. That's going to hold temperatures down here next weekend. And in the east, we are warming up slowly here today and tomorrow. Uh, our pool opened up in Raleigh. Not too many people wanted to jump in. It was still too cold, but we are going to warm some next week into the 80s and low 90s here in the Carolinas by Tuesday. Arkansas, Louisiana, Florida into the low 90s as well by Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so that heat's going to trigger more fuel for storms. Uh, in the Great Lakes and Midwest, we are around seasonal temperatures, 60s and 70s, except right on the lake shores. Uh, then we warm up some more towards next weekend. Uh, before the next shot of cool weather comes in after the 15th and 16th. All right, I gotta take a breath here. I got a late start Saturday. I hope you guys do get a chance to tune into this. Subscribe if you could. Most of next week, I'll have a video. I've got a little travel for work, so I'm not gonna have it every day, but uh, I'm gonna keep you all posted the best that I can. If you could like this video, subscribe so you can see more videos and share with your friends, I very much appreciate it. Um, much love to you guys that have been sticking with me every day here, no matter what the weather. Uh, I really, I really appreciate you guys, and I know a lot of you know that I am a believer in God. I'm a Christian. I give all the glory to God who allows me to do this every day, no matter how I feel, no matter what's going on in life. Uh, and there has been a lot, trust me. Um, I give all the glory to God. He has called me to do this. He's called me to share with you guys what he means to me. And, you know, Matthew 12, 36 says, I tell you that every idle word that men speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Judgment Day is coming, folks. Um, you know, not up to me to decide that. That's been in the Bible. That's in the Word of God. That's been around for thousands of years. Uh, and that's that Judgment Day is coming. Jesus is coming again, whether or not you choose to believe that. I'm not going to slap you across the face if you don't, because I didn't for 30 years of my life. Now I'm about to turn 41. And I've realized that, yes, there are meanings for everything. And God is there for me. And most importantly, despite the judgment that is coming to you, in John 28, it states, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Everyone who chooses to believe in God through his son, Jesus Christ, 
has that gift of eternal life. You will be judged, but God has already promised you, no matter how lousy a person you feel like you are, you are still um, given that gift of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, who's already died on the cross for us to live. And that is what drives me to do what I do every day. Uh, even though I slip up, even though I feel like things are out of control, I just have to remind myself, and I'm reminding you folks, that while things may seem like they're out of control, in the end, things are completely in control by God. We are given eternal life. I just wanted to share that good news with you today because it means so much to me. I hope you have a blessed weekend. I'm happy to pray for you if you have any prayer requests. Um, very much, I don't just say that. I, I do pray for you, and I have others do that as well. And uh, I really want you guys to just see the joy in the Lord every day. That's why I do what I do every day. But if you're still listening and that's not what you believe, that's okay. Uh, I just want to let you know it's okay. You don't have to believe what I believe. There's no fault finding here at all. Just wanted to share that news with you because it's important to me. Thank you all so much for your time. Have a great weekend. God bless you.